Hi, my name is Raquel Castillo, and I decided to acquire the cultural knowledge of acting. Uh, my own experience in this field is that I was in theater for six years. I was mostly a technician. I did sound production and stage management, but I did end up acting in two student-directed uh, productions by the end of the six years. I took all of the theater classes throughout middle school and high school. I've studied the history, the different types of acting, the technical aspects of acting for most of my life. And I was good at it. I was good at my job. And I had a close relationship with all of the actors, despite the fact that I was a technician. My experience in theater, I absolutely loved. And the acting that I did a couple times really improved my confidence. I loved the energy from everybody. I loved how they really hyped everybody else up that wasn't comfortable. And the work that we put in together to produce this amazing production, it was just so invigorating to see the finished product. But, like I said, I wasn't in the spotlight all the time, nor was I critiqued as much as everybody else. So I wanted to see how being a full-time actor can really affect your self-esteem. When reading Cynthia Barron's encyclopedia entry on acting, I got the impression that actors are part of a whole design, and that's how they're treated by their directors. Actors are meant to adjust the quality and energy of their voices. They're expected to adjust the actions and energy of their gestures, voices, and actions to communicate what their character wants, and the dynamic relationships that are constantly changing with the characters on screen. I would think that the pressure of being an actor to mold their body and their voice to have complete control over their emotions that they're showing while not actively feeling them would be exhausting. The film side of acting at least has a musical score or visual cues to portray the intrapersonal communication going on in the character's head. Uh, going into the academic sources that I went into, um, Arifa Martin and Grum's article uh, the Self-Concept in the English Drama Club, a case study of two English language education department students. It told me that self-concept and drama are both important factors in learning that have been studied in the educational field for decades, both affecting academic achievement. This article even cites a study done by C.J. Bloomfield to about 1,500 adolescent students in Australia, and they found out that students who actively participated in extracurricular activities held a high positive social self-concept, as well as their academic self-concept and their own self-worth. This study would reflect how my experience in theater went, but it contradicts what I interpreted from the encyclopedia article. In Arifa's study, student one is in the production and she gets the lead all the time, but she is also hypercritical of herself and her acting resulting in a negative self-image. Student two, he would constantly get criticism all the time, but he used that to progress. This article, it emphasizes how student one was given many compliments in the, in the beginning while student two was criticized from the beginning. And so they both took these criticisms and handled them in their own way. Student one negatively impacted her self-esteem while student two used it to make himself better. These points presented in the article insinuate that it really depends on how the individuals react to their outside environment. Student one has a positive environment, but she ended up with a negative self-concept, even stating that despite how many compliments she was getting from her friends, she sometimes didn't believe them because of how she viewed herself. And student two had a negative environment. People were constantly criticizing him, whether it was for out of good nature or bad, and he ended up using it to improve himself, and he started feeling better about himself. The second article that I looked into was the aphasic theater, or theater boosting self-esteem, and it's talking about how the aphasic theater built in 1992 was meant to help victims of aphasia cope with their communication disorder, which was sometimes caused by strokes or brain damage. This was meant to rehabilitate and improve the self-esteem of patients. And they even had a study completed by the East Space Group of the University of Montreal to confirm the validity of this new innovative, innovative rehabilitation system. The final piece of evidence that I will be drawing from is an interview that I conducted with Riley Fay. Riley Fay is a 19-year-old actress who took theater all throughout elementary through high school and is now transitioning into film acting. Riley started her love for acting around five years old and has been chasing her dreams ever since. 
She has also struggled with her recent diagnosis of autism and has used acting as a way to learn communication. Whenever I asked Riley how much she believed being an actor has an effect on her identity, she said that it is a huge part of her identity and has been the one constant all throughout her life. Now that it's professional for her, anything she does can affect her career, so before making a big choice or posting anything, she often asks herself how this will affect her future. The next question I had for Riley was, what noticeable changes have happened to your self-concept since you started acting? Her self-concept now relies on her success in her field, whether or not she got a callback, what kind of role she got, what feedback she got from the directors. She describes her self-concept as very fluid and dramatically affected by any little note or feedback. Since Riley has centered her identity around this culture and values her self-concept based on her ability to act, she is deeply impacted and has based her self-concept on her measurable success rate. As self-concept is the perception we have of our skills, ability, knowledge, competencies, and personality, if Riley does not learn to value the abilities outside her acting, then her self-concept will, will continue to suffer. As Riley is currently going through the transition of being a traditional actor versus being a film actor, I decided to ask her what the difference is in her self-concept between the two eras. She said that film acting didn't come as naturally to her as traditional acting did. She really used to excel in her field and always got the lead almost every time, while film acting has been much more competitive and she's going to need to work harder. Riley did say that her confidence grew as she progressed, but whenever she was later confronted with film acting, she didn't have the skills that she valued, plummeting her self-esteem. I predict that as Riley gets better at film acting, her self-esteem will improve, just like it did as she got better in traditional acting. In conclusion, the production industry as an actor can strongly affect your self-perception. This industry is way too unstable for anybody to be basing their value solely on whether or not they succeed in this field. As it does help to have thick skin or just use criticism to your advantage, it also is just as important to value your skills, ability, knowledge, competencies, and personality that isn't used in acting. Thank you.